Now, what's what's really fascinating to me when it comes to the TR tradition, and uh, I, I don't know if you've seen the video I did a little while back. I was doing a comparison between TR and Byzantine readings. And I, 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 I caught a snippet. Yeah, I, I found a, I found one amongst uh, Erasmus's editions. I, I think I did uh, 12 or 15 editions. There's just whatever I could find online. And uh, what what variant was that? It was so, somewhere in Matthew about Jesus right, being set upon a donkey or Jesus, you know, being being sat on the donkey, but, you know, his disciples helping him there or whether Jesus just simply sat on the donkey. And there's another one involving like whether it was the clothes on top of the donkey or not. There, there was some, uh, you know, minor, minor stuff like nobody's going to read through that and come up with any large theological treaties. But what I was more fascinated at, and given what we had thought about the Texas Receptus tradition, I was thinking that there might be one or two variants there, right? Like there was a, a print edition apparatus in Adam Boyd's uh, critical text, New Testament. And uh, it sort of tipped me off because it, it had Scrivener's edition. Um, and normally in the apparatus, if it's just like the TR is... is uh, united here it would just say tr so by saying scrivener it suggests that there's a difference there in the tr uh, so looking at erasmus's five editions that uh, came out with a different reading in every single one of the editions i was surprised i was like i thought these were going to be like very close and, and well, i mean well, let, let me let me clarify you yeah. mean all five erasmus editions were different within themselves or just yes. different from scrivener no no different different amongst themselves Really? Um, now, the, now the the variants were minor. Like so, so one of them was like a misspelling. Uh, I, I can't even remember now. Ekathisen versus Ekathisen with a eta instead of a yota or a yota with uh, uh, something else. And then there was uh, off tone versus off tis because re referring to the donkey or not. Um, and just just the way that the variants played out, it was different in all five of just Erasmus's editions. And then you can see as as time went along, right? I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to that video, but you can see as time goes along that that reading begins to become standardized to where it ends up in Stephanus's edition. And Stephanus seems to be the guy who really standardized a number of TR readings just just based on what what I see here. And then that finds its way the 1550 edition specifically, and that finds its way through to the rest of the TR tradition. But what, what's fascinating, that that's a long-winded way of saying, what's fascinating is even amongst the TR tradition, um, some form of textual criticism uh, was being done. And mm -hmm. for me, it seems that textual criticism has been a part of the church since, you know, Jerome is talking about the Vulgate, even before then, right? Irenaeus is talking about, you know, variant readings in 616 and 666 and other places as well. Um, so, this this whole idea of having to judge a reading based on what what you have behind you is something that has been happening throughout the history of the church from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, and then you say, well, the um, the process stopped at the uh, at the Reformation, and we have the TR. But then you look at the TR, and the TR is just filled with these you know these variants, and we can debate whether they're big or not. But you know the the facts are there is that the TR tradition just has a lot of sorting to do. Um, so did that stop with Scrivener's edition? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think Scrivener is the last TR edition specifically. Now, if you'd ask me <laughs> as a Byzantine prioritist, I think the next logical step to that stream of text is to move into a more Byzantine text and to continue, to continue the work looking at that kind of scenario. Uh, but uh, again, it's just, just fascinating that, um, textual criticism continues. It, it continues that there's no stamp on one specific edition of the TR. Uh, and I know my King James only uh, brothers, my King James only friends uh, would suggest the King James version is it, but I, you know, I have some reasons for thinking that a translation is probably not going to be, um, not going to be the way that God preserves his word. And, and I have some reasons for that. Maybe I'll share that in another video, but yeah, just, just fascinating. It, even the TR tradition as a printed text edition is still having, you know, some form of text critical work being done on it. Well, I think another note that needs to be said is if, if, if you're going to be shocked that the Nestle Allen is going to come out with its 29th edition, <laughs> um, by that same logic, you know, after Erasmus or after Stephanus, you know, we should have stopped or Beza, we should have stopped I mean, at some point we have to recognize that even printed editions need to be refined. And like I said, um, I, I've moved on to First John. I just actually finished First John, collating all of First John yesterday. Oh wow! Um, and so there was a unique Scrivenerism, if I could call it that. That um, uh, he he has a unique 
uh, spelling. It's just a final uh, sigma, so no, nothing major. Right. But it's he cleaned up the text, or maybe he got rid of it. I can't remember which one it is now. But he cleaned up the text that everyone else did not. And so well, at least we have to say, if, if, if you're willing to say that the Texas Receptus went through multiple editions to get to its final form, why can't we say the same thing with the critical text or the Byzantine text or, or anything right. like that? Hmm. And uh, I, I, li I like to think that um, textual criticism is an ongoing discipline that God has given us so we would stay in the text. Right. If we had a stabilized final form, like the Vulgate, you'd end up in a Roman Catholic place where you wouldn't even be doing this much anymore except because you're in the field uh, as a scholar. But uh, if you just assume that the text, the text has been stabilized, you'd be surprised at how many people don't read the text anymore. Hmm, and so right. nothing else that keeps us in the text. And I think that's part of God's wise providence to do it this way. Okay. Well, so, since you've gone through first John, are you, are you holding the results for a, a specific reveal? Uh, can, <laughs> can you share, can you share one with us? I, I'd be sure, really curious. Actually, I just tweeted it uh, yesterday. Okay. okay. So this would have been this would have been a better answer to the question earlier. You know, what is the most shocking one? Yeah. The most shocking result was the mishmash at the Johannine comma. Okay. Uh, if you go to my Twitter, I um I did a, a screenshot <laughs> of both the apparatus and the text, and it was as convoluted. And I was struggling. How do I even mark this in the text? And then how do I mark this in the apparatus? Because it was all over the place. Right. The actual Johannine hmm. comma reading that we have in Scrivener was actually not exactly as it appears until Stephanos's second edition. Even his right. first edition, he changed something. But Erasmus, I, we're, we're familiar that he inserts the text in his third edition, but it's clearly uh, just a Latin translation uh, because it's missing all of the articles. Latin doesn't right. have an article. And so there is not one uh, edition that matches Scrivener's until Stephanus's second edition. And even right. then, it would go back and forth. Some of Beza's would revert. Some of Beza's would, would maintain. And uh, that was all over the place. I mean, it, it was just, like, wild. Was not expecting that. So First John was an interesting category of, yeah. of strangeness. Uh, First John 2.23 is another well-known variant that uh, the TR was not very unified on and uh, the Byzantine does include, but mm. uh, the TR did not, but it was always added in the margin or the King James had original 1611 had it in like italics. If you look at the longer reading in first John two twenty three, it wasn't there, but it should have been there type of thing. So it's kind of a right. fun, fun text critical um, uh, theory. So, uh, yeah, that's I, I moved on to First John, and uh, now I guess I'll go on to Second John. We'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I I want to ask you about a specific passage. All right, so the uh, the uh, the King James reads. Um, let me let me pull up a King James here. I want to make sure I get it right. Um, where are you? KJV search. King James read. Hereby we perceive the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, I have a, I, I use the NKJV. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I like to push that one. That, that's my favorite. Um, but the NKJV, which is a TR translation, does not contain of God. So hereby perceive we uh, love because what he laid down his life. At? One John three sixteen. Okay. Now I would be curious in your uh, multi edition collation. Um, What's happening with uh, of God there? Are you ready for this? You. Yeah, I, I have it. I, I wish I could share my screen. So it is. We could do that. Is, well, we, I, we I'll could leave do that. that up to you. I'll leave that okay, up to here, you. Okay, here, let me let me pop that up here. Let me know when there you, you go. see it. All right. Okay. So uh, it actually is already it's set up to go here. Here's verse 16. Yeah. Here's the variant we're talking about to Theu. Yeah. And uh, here is the apparatus. Okay. Okay. So all of those that omit it. And we're talking about a lot here. Yeah. Um, would be, you know, the Elzevirs, uh, Beza's hmm. first edition. And by the way, he, he had a Latin edition before his 1565. I didn't do. Right. Because the, just, I, I hope for obvious reasons. Anyways, um, but all of hmm. Stephanus uh, did not have it. Uh, but where is it included, I guess, is the question. Even the, yeah. the later yeah. Oxford, the Oxford 1873 edition 
omits it. So that's a major difference between Scrivener and uh, the just prior to that, the earlier. So the one that has it was going to be Stephanus. He has it in his margin in the 15, uh, 1550. So that's the, the really important Stephanus one. Yeah. And then Beza's uh, second, or I guess his third, fourth, and fifth, depending on how you want to count Beza, uh, but especially his 1598, the one that the King James would use, they include it. Everyone else does not. From Erasmus, Aldine, Grebelius, Kopfo, Colonnaeus, Stephanus, Elzevirs, Oxford, they all omit it. And so it only appears in a few of these so, manuscripts. So are, if I'm are, looking at this right in your apparatus, the only ones that contain it is a marginal reading in Stephanus 1550, and then Beza's 1582, 1588, and 1598 editions. Yes. And th those Very are interesting. His Th those are his folio editions. I didn't, like I said, I didn't check the octavo, his minor editions. They could be there, so I, I'll give that caveat that I don't know. I've not okay. checked. I could, I could do it real fast, but uh, I don't know, real fast, but um, I, I don't have it ready to go to to give you that answer yet. Right. I can't remember whether or not the KJV italicized that. Um, anyway, yeah, that, just something interesting that I've uh, seen a few times. I've actually, seen some criticisms of the NKJV because it doesn't have of God in that passage. I was just curious to see where, um, where it landed in regards to your apparatus. That's pretty interesting, pretty yeah. interesting stuff. While I'm sharing my screen, now I can show yep. you uh, <laughs> uh, what I was talking about with <laughs> the, the Johannine comma. Um, yep. Just, just so you can see it. And so here, here's what we're looking at here. Um, so seven and eight, and you can see all of the, Text critical sigla, I have to add there, there, uh, there. Oh, yeah. There, there, <laughs> there, there. <laughs> it's, just, it's all over the place. Wow. And, uh, I, I struggle with with how to how to put it. But here here's the uh, apparatus as it reads, and it's quite complex. Yeah, I see that. And uh, so Incredible. It, that was surprising. I really did not expect it to turn out to be uh, that inconsistent. So... And I did yeah, it's like, in this one. I actually did add Beza's octavos just because I wanted to be a little bit more thorough. So you can yeah. see all of Beza's editions in that one. Very interesting. It's like they just didn't didn't know what to do with it. In the it, that tradition. or sometimes Beza's printer, uh, especially the sixteen eleven uh, Crispin edition, their printer I don't think was very sharp. Um, but you uh, can okay. see in terms of of which actually have the Scrivener reading. That's it right there. Uh, Stephanus is second, third, and fourth. Beza's major editions, a few of his minors, not all of them, yeah. Elsevier and Oxford. Mm -hmm. So that's why it would end up in Scrivener because it has the major players for the TR tradition. Stephanus, right. Beza, and Elsevier. All right. Very cool. So what what are your takeaways from, from this study you've done? Uh, I have a great respect for the Texas Receptus, given what they had at the time, given their the the heritage that it has. It really was mm -hmm. uh, the church received or the the text received at that time by all. I, I get that. Uh, it was part of the the Reformation. I I'm mm -hmm. um, I'm a Reformed Baptist, so uh, you know I I draw my church roots from the Puritans, from the Congregationalists that decided that credo baptism was the way so i have immense respect for the tr and to see its consistency in all these editions you know it, i i respect it greatly uh in my church we actually use the new king james as well not because we're tr onlyist or even byzantinist mm -hmm. uh mm, right but because we just wanted to, everyone to have the same translation and that's the one that had been used prior to my coming to my church and so we, that's mm, what right. we went with but i do have a great respect for the texas receptus and its history and its influence on society it's uh, as a Greek New Testament goes, it's as influential as the King James is on the English speaking world. I mean, it, it, we just had to be honest about that. But at the same time, we also need to be honest with the reality that it's not as stable of a tradition that, you know, we have been led to believe that right. among all of these various editions of the Texas Receptus tradition, and I, I use that language, Texas Receptus tradition, uh, right. there are quite a few differences and um, that's okay. That There's not a problem with that. It's mm -hmm. only a problem when you claim that you have an absolute text and you demand everyone else to have an absolute text. We're right. not demanding that. We, we have a textual confidence. We, we trust in the preservation and the manuscript tradition. So my takeaway is I, I have further respect 
Uh, in fact, I even root for when I when I'm in a certain manuscript, I root for certain readings. And, and and when I come across, you know, Elsevier, you know, a variant from Elsevier, mm. I'm like, whoa, that did not see that coming. Yeah. Part yeah. of that is just because by the time I get to Elsevier, I'm I'm towards the end of of a 20 verse block, mm. and uh, I'm just trying to fly through. So when I come mm. across one, I'm very shocked. Where I'm hoping that it'll just keep on going and, and make my time right. go faster. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a little bit of a slog sometimes, eh? It is. It's, it's hard. I've, I've done a few uh, a few bits where I've compared a number of things or tried to copy stuff down or and and you go over it once and then you go over it and you're like, oh, I I missed that there. Oh, I missed that there. I missed that there. Oh, there's a Yota there. Oh, there's a Ita there. Like it's you can you can understand how the variants them, themselves make it into the tradition. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Absolutely. it's tough work. It is. Um, well, and, and you'd find a variant in one edition, like, all right, let me go back to the earlier editions to see if it was repeated or if this is the first time. And I've caught, usually I, I do okay, but I've, there's been a few times where I caught myself <laughs> realizing I missed one or two here. So it's yeah. very tedious, um, hmm. and very, uh, very peculiar and very pedantic, but it's, there's also, if you have kind of that OCD tendency, there's also a, a fulfilling uh, element right. to it as well i don't know i, I it does kind of of I, I enjoy it i'm i'm sick like that i guess i do have a, a bit of enjoyment <laughs> you're sick you're sick <laughs> you enjoy it no it's all good so uh but before we part ways why don't you tell me a little bit about your your textual preferences uh where where do you land on the uh i guess it's a spectrum between the critical text and a more you know and a, and a tr it, it might be position. easier if I gave you my influences. So sure. uh, when I did a THM at Southeastern, I studied under David Allen Black. David okay. Allen Black was very much a Sturzian. In fact, he, they, they just put out a <laughs> book where he's kind of arguing for Sturz's view. I thought that was very helpful. And yeah, I, I just took, got that the other day. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's excellent. It's short little read, but it's good. Yeah. And then I took an advanced text criticism class with Maurice Robinson. So okay. I kind of have that that byzantine priority teaching as well as david on black's byzantine is good don't just discount it right and so what what they would say black would say that we need to consider the geographical uh dispersion of a reading mm -hmm. um, yes and then robinson is going to say we need to have a historical transmission so a a temporal uh tr uh dispersion if you will like it, there needs to be a, a stable historical transmission and he finds that in the byzantine I want to say yes to both, but I want to give more than just a text critical line of reasoning for that. I think those are both fine reasonings. Mm -hmm. What I do is give a theological reason behind mm -hmm. it as well. So um, I, I tend to vacillate between, I, I mean, in my, my view might be more closely aligned to um, what Black would call um, uh, reason conservatism, I think, uh, uh, of his categories. Yeah, uh, I, I've just I've used the terminology co uh, a confessional methodology. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what I and it's 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 not to be cheeky, but it really is the doctrine of the London Baptist Confession, which I I subscribe, speaks to the stability of preservation by way of 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 the church that God mm -hmm. uses His church covenantally in space, covenantally in time. We are all to also with the light of reason to use those elements, not to get rid of internal evidence, not to get rid of, you know, CSNTM, uh, SNTMs, you know, using these digital productions to undercover, uh, you know, ancient readings mm. that we've never read before. Those mm. are all great things that we need to use. Right. But ultimately, the, the theological foundation is going to be what has the church used and and has that church has the church used it throughout history. Right. And so those are my two major criteria. So uh, in other words, and that actually simplifies it for uh, pastors too, that you're looking at yeah. the most diverse reading, the most um, uh, temporally diverse reading. And usually you'll, you'll have first John two twenty three is a good example where the, the longer reading is actually the most diverse reading. The shorter reading in first John two twenty three is the majority, the Byzantine uh, have the shorter reading, but there are, <laughs> Uh, hmm. Of the 500 Byzantine manuscripts of First John, uh, at least 100 of them, give or take, include yeah. the longer reading. So there is a pedigree that has a longer reading uh, in the Byzantine, sure. in the Alexandrian, in the Western. And I know text types are being pushed against. I get that. I don't think they're ever going to go away, and I don't think they should mm -hmm. because 
we can localize readings based on translations, based on church fathers. So I, right. I think that there's use for them. And so uh, I look at First John two twenty three and see it's it's uh, it's not the Byzantine reading, but it's what the church has been using throughout you know uh, all parts of the church, and it's been used throughout church history. And so theologically and text critically, that seems to be the better reading, the, the longer reading in First um, John two twenty three. Right. And it, you can make sense of why it got omitted very easily by uh, uh, just a, a simple case of misreading the ending. Right, skipping. right. So, now that, uh, that's my methodology. In short, I'm working on getting something put out more official. But uh, sure. I think an unofficial version of my of a paper I presented has been leaked out and and, and moved around. Uh, somehow James White <laughs> got a hold of it and then asked me about it. I'm like, how did you get a hold of that thing? Oh, that's funny. Uh, it happens. So, yeah, honestly. yeah. It's uh, it, yeah. The the historical argument really resonates with me. So uh, uh, probably about two and a half years ago now, two two or three years ago. Um, I, I made a video on uh, uh, making the decision because I, I, I was sort of up in the air between a, a full like TR position versus a, a Byzantine position. I just I was weighing the evidence, weighing everything out. And the, the one thing that kind of tipped the scales for me uh, was was just that was the historical argument. So um, I think theology has to take precedence when it comes to text critical work. If you don't have a good theology, then you're not going to produce a good text. Right. Um, so. Anyway, when it comes to his, the historical side of things and the church being sort of the caretaker, I, I guess you could sort of say that if the church is the caretaker of the text, um, the Textus Receptus, you don't find, you don't find the text of Scripture in that form anywhere, anywhere before the Reformation. Like it's it's a very unique uh, form of the text to the Reformation. Like you like you said, you could probably consider it its own text type. It's got a number of Latin, Latin intrusions, right? Um, it's, uh, it's got a number of its own readings, even, um, you consider uh, revelation, uh, book of life, tree of life, like this sort of thing. Again, when it comes, when it ultimately comes down to it, it's like, was the church using a TR form? I'm not going to say the TR because, you know, I, I can hear uh, the CB confessional bibliologist now, you know, it's, it's, they didn't have the TR because it wasn't called the TR, but uh, it's a Texas receptus form of the text did not exist before the reformation no no one anywhere um no manuscript anywhere comes even close to um and relatively speaking comes even close to a uh a received text uh form uh, it's closer it's more closer to a byzantine text form and that, and that can be demonstrated um just just with the percentage numbers on on the ecm for example so um yeah that that's what kind of tipped the scales for me and it totally res the historical discuss the the historical argument really really resonates with me uh, the most so would you like to say anything else before we part ways here i'd like to i'd like to see this um texas receptus project as i'm calling it go on hmm. um I, I want to as i said i finished first john i'm i'm my my trajectory is try to do 20 25 verses a week in the in all the other things i'm doing as well which i have a lot so that might reduce but i'd like to find a publisher that's willing to back this because i don't want to have to self-publish this at all and i'd like to find some interested parties to help me assist me in this uh, i don't want us to be a, a one-man circus so um if any of your listeners are out there and are capable of reading uh, the ligature of minuscule, which it's it's not like you have it in your uh, G and T's now. Uh, it does nope. take a little bit of of training and learning. Um, but if you're interested in this project, you know, please, you know, feel free to contact me because I think this would be a worthwhile endeavor. And again, it's not necessarily to dissuade a Texas Receptus proponent. They could value from this because now that they could say exactly what Erasmus's fourth edition says, hmm. uh, right, th that would be the point here. And, and it, I could see it. I could see it actually boosting their confidence in the Texas Receptus, because by and large, uh, there is a stability in the apparatus and the variants compared to like the Nestle Island. Okay, that's fine. But uh, I would like to see a project like this come to fruition and do the entirety of the New Testament. That would be long and daunting, but I, I would love for. Uh, so, so my goal is to do that. Whether it's just me, and that'll take five years. <laughs> Uh, or whether others want to come alongside and, and assist. If there's a publisher that is out there that wants to do this, what I would love, I would love to have a New King James Diaglot, uh, have New King James oh, on one cool. side and a uh, critical uh, edition TR. of the Texas Receptus on That's the other cool. side. 
I think that'd be a lot of fun to have. Uh, that'd be a neat little thing to, to, to own. So I can see a lot of value in this project. And so I, I'd be really interested to see if anyone else is curious and um, wanting to get, uh, you know, come alongside me and help me out with that. Um, otherwise, I'll be going at it alone. And um, it's a project that right. I plan on continue doing. All right, Timothy, thank you so much for spending this uh, oh, about an hour so far with me. I uh, really appreciate your time and uh, the work you're doing seems to be rather valuable and uh, hopefully it continues. Hopefully you can get some help with that. That's a very big project. Um, so I'm rooting for you there. Anyway, uh, anyway, brothers and sisters, I hope you found this discussion informative and until next time, we'll see you around. Thank you.